We finally have the theme from the upcoming Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Let's check it out. What on earth is that? That is a really fascinating sound. So it's called an arrow? I know I'm saying that wrong. That is fascinating. What a sound. That is so cool. What a fascinating sound. That is so cool. <laughs> and then the coming in with the piccolo. So pretty simple here. We just have F minor to B flat major. One, four. I'm not sure what the melody is there. Something along those lines. Oof. Beautiful. Oh, wait a second. That took me that entire passage to realize I was listening to saxophone. This is an alto saxophone. We get this parallel fourths motion, which means that one of our, one of our bottom notes feels like it doesn't fit. See what I mean? Like it kind of doesn't fit there. So, so we're going. We get that note right there. It almost sounds like it doesn't work. It almost sounds like it's not supposed to be there, like it doesn't fit, but it maintains the parallel motion. like we said in the beginning. And then we ended up D minor. And then we work our way up. We wind up on another key change into E minor now. Right before we have the final kind of chord, what we might expect normally, we go from C to up a whole step to D, and that would bring us back to E. And we have done that elsewhere in this piece already, but instead, we go to F. Because it gives us a nice chromatic resolution here. Just there, that's it. And that's how we end it. But the buildup here is nuts. Check that out. That is literally Breath of the Wild. So 
callback to the Breath of the Wild theme. And if you didn't know, both of these themes are the brilliant work of Manaka Kataoka. She composed Tears of the Kingdom and was responsible for composing and arranging the majority of Breath of the Wild. And it's just so cool to see the crossover here between the two themes. The callback to the incredible success that was Breath of the Wild while also leading into this new, unknown territory. <laughs> Boy, the themes have come a long way since then, although it's not devoid of really cool stuff going on. That's a great melody. And that stuff is always amazing as well, seeing how composers worked around the limitations of the 8-bit system to create beautiful compositions. <laughs> two chords. The vast majority of the soundtracks for all of the Zelda games share some things harmonically. They have a style, they have a very recognizable style, and that style often utilizes very diatonic harmony. Now we've talked a little bit about diatonic harmony in the past. Basically, when you take chords that are the chords that naturally exist when we utilize the notes of the major scale, you get diatonic chords the naturally existing chords within the notes of the major scale. And oftentimes, the Zelda games are using that a lot. I mean, we look back to Ocarina of Time again, we just have this. Absolutely beautiful, but often very simple, which makes it that much more effective. In Tears of the Kingdom, we have this F minor platform that we start on. And even when we do change some of our, uh, our our keys, right? So we go into D minor here. We're not using a lot of chords that go to weird intervals or use a lot of altered upper extensions or anything like that. They're largely very simple chords, which makes writing epic and cinematic themes like these very easy. That's how we get a lot of this. Sometimes we depart a little bit from it, like in the end, Tears of the Kingdom, we do. So it's a little bit different, but of course very rarely do we ever follow rules that we set for ourselves absolutely to a T. One of the things you'll find that's very commonly used, which we've actually talked about before on this channel, it's the anime chord progression, quote unquote, right? And it's that progression that uses flat six, flat seven, one. And we see it multiple times in Tears of the Kingdom. There it is in D minor. We see it in F minor. Right? We almost see it in E minor right at the very end, except remember, we would expect to hear C, D, leading us back to E minor, but instead we, we, we actually use C, and then we use that F chord, right? Which is substituting, instead of D, we're using F. So that's a cool way that you can actually use that chord progression, but then find ways to slightly alter it, just to create new and interesting sounds. Okay, I gotta stop. We've done a video on Breath of the Wild before. I gotta stop myself from listening to the entire thing on this video, but you can see a lot of the similarities that Manaka Kataoka used when writing these two different themes. Now, they have a very different style, of course. This one's much more... A lot more motion, a lot more momentum, right? But we're still getting that flourishing piano. Listen to the... right in the beginning. Listen to that. 
Not really sure what that is. I think we're using a lot of this uh, parallel fourths motion. We had this flourishing piano in Breath of the Wild as well. Now, of course, this is much more mellow, much more chilled out. Oof, absolutely beautiful. A lot of the same things going on, even though the feel has completely changed. Yeah. What a cool instrument, wow. Yeah, callbacks all over the place. if this is your favorite Zelda soundtrack so far, or if Breath of the Wild you thought was better, or maybe even one of the older ones. Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, time is running out to take advantage of the pre-sale of our brand new Piano Jumpstart. If you've ever wanted to learn piano, but you don't care about diving into things like reading music and music theory, we wanted to put together something that can help you learn piano without any of that stuff. We're gonna teach you how to play some really useful things that can apply to thousands of your favorite songs without having to do any boring exercises or scales so that you can just learn how to play play some of your favorite songs for your friends and your family. With Piano Jumpstart, you can start playing in less than 30 minutes. In fact, the very first lesson, which you can check out over on the Piano Jumpstart page, linked in the description, we're gonna get you playing immediately. And if you like that approach, take advantage of the 50% off pre-sale discount. The full course is getting ready to come out and you'll automatically receive access to it when it does. Thank you so much for your support. And guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.